I have a nice little Sato 50 inch in here. Picked this up a few months ago. It was in need of uh, bearing replacement. And of course, there were some other things I found wrong with it when I opened it up and repaired it. It is a running engine at this time. It's actually quite nice. It doesn't have quite the RPM that it should. Uh, so what I was going to do is I was going to just create this video to show the teardown of a Sato engine. And I'm going to install a new Bowman's ring on it. And then I'll also make uh, subsequent videos of it running, uh, the reassembly of it, and that type of thing. I'm going to get right into taking this thing apart. So I'm going to start with the exhaust. Just unscrew this real quick. Uh, next we'll go with the carburetor. It's got the little metal gasket like it should have there. And the O-ring. Uh, from here we'll go to the back plate. As I said, <coughs> I have already installed new bearings in this engine and I've run it probably two or three times. And it is a good running engine. It doesn't seem to quite generate the RPM that I think it should. So I'm going to replace the ring. I'm going to take the timing cover and timing gear off also so that I can go through the process of setting the timing on these Sato engines. can see one of the things I replaced on this uh, was a connecting rod also so it's got a nice new connecting rod I'm going to go ahead and pop this plug out of here <coughs> so it will turn over nice and easy I don't know if you can see the nice clean bearings in there but this is a really nice engine now that it's all cleaned up valves for the valve covers now. I don't recall if I had to replace any screws on this engine when I rebuilt it or not. The rocker or the, the valve covers are pretty pitted. Kind of nasty looking actually but they're functional. I didn't buy this engine to be a show engine. I bought it basically just as a rebuild project and to do exactly what I'm doing now. I don't really have any airplanes at the time. This time to put in this engine, but it'll be ready to take one in the air. You see how nice and clean that is. Yeah, it looks like next we're going to Start taking the head off. Nothing special here, just I always try to do these in a crisscross pattern, loosen them up that way. Usually one screw that's kind of stubborn, and this one's the one that feels like it's kind of stubborn. Okay, those screws are out. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and just gently lift this. You can see I'm starting to pull the pushrod covers out from the boots here. What I want to do is I just want to gently kind of disengage the connecting rod from the 
cranked in here. These push rods are identical, so it doesn't matter if they get mixed up. But uh, so here's our head off the engine now. Notice I still have the piston in there, and you can see pretty nice clean in there, even after it's uh, only had probably two or three runs on it. And right, I'm gonna pull these screws off here. I've got a tray of parts here. I haven't been putting these parts in there, but I guess I should do that just to kind of keep these all together. I'm not going to do anything with the carburetor. I know that it works fine. So it's already been disassembled once before and it's in good shape. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to basically just focus on the remaining parts here. Uh, let's see here. Let's start with, I'm going to take the timing cover off. You can see the top dead center here. On this engine, unlike some OS engines, there's not really a mark that indicates where top dead center is because this prop or thrust washer can come off and go on anyway, so there's no need. I mean, it's not a keyed, the crankshaft is not keyed like it is on a lot of OS engines. So, I do believe that when I <coughs> rebuilt this engine just recently that I had a new set of gaskets. So I'm hoping, if I recall correctly, there'll be a nice fresh gasket under here that will still be in good shape and it won't need to be replaced again. So at this point, taking it apart, I'm not really concerned about the orientation of the crankshaft. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go into how you actually set the timing. In a little bit here after I get this off. All these screws should be up and out. It should just be a matter of just lifting this right up and off. Okay, so that's all. I'm just going to dope these screws real quick. And like I hoped, there's that nice, fresh, clean gasket. <coughs> My nice timing gear. Now it's odd that you can see here that just through the few runs it's had, it really didn't get any kind of lubrication at all. It's pretty dry in there. So when I put this back together, this is one area I'm going to pretty heavily put some oil in there because it's it's pretty bone dry. But one of the things I wanted to show you here is this hole. And that hole this way lines up with the intake lifter. So when you go to actually set the timing, there's a in the Sato book on disassembling and reassembling Sato engines, there's a tool that you can make that will actually go gets inserted in here and it lines up and holds goes into that hole and that's how you actually set your timing because there's actually a timing dot here and that dot just so happens to be on the exact opposite well, not quite opposite of where this intake push rod would be so I'll have to take the tappet or the cam follower out and this bushing or this uh, rubber boot to insert what I have is a screwdriver with a tip that just so happens to fit perfectly in there and then it gives me a lot more leverage. I can just stick that screwdriver in there and just drop this thing on and just make sure that this is at top dead center. But we'll go over that when I get to it.